Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Opti Bottoms coming to you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 292 of the Mark 1 Ultron from the Avengers Age of Ultron. For the package, you can see you have a really cool image of Ultron in his Mark 1 form there in the background with the really large Avengers A here in the foreground. On the back of the package, you have various warnings and contact information for Hot Toys. And then when you lift up the slip sleeve cover, on the back of the inner box you have the cast and crew responsible for making the figure. With the front of that inner packaging, having a full open window that allows you to fully see the figure as well as his accessories. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. Okay guys, so here we have the Mark 1 version of Ultron opened up and out of its packaging. And this thing absolutely is spectacular. The amount of detail, the amount of parts, everything on this is just above and beyond anything I really feel that Hot Toys has given us before. This looks absolutely terrific. But starting off first with his accessories, as you can see, he really doesn't come with much. But that makes sense because when Ultron appeared in this form, he really didn't interact with anything except for this little piece. This is that uh, number four Iron Legion body that he picked up and then subsequently crushed the head of. One aspect of this that I really do wish, as you can see, the head can detach. I would have loved it if they actually included a crushed version of this head. But the detail on this is actually pretty nice. You got four on there. You got some uh, severed arms and everything. The actual arms here at the shoulders can also come off on both sides. So you do have that. Uh, if you wanted to make him a little bit more battle damage, you can also like articulate him some and give him some different kind of poses and such come around here to the back you can see basically it's it's all molded and everything but it kind of looks like it's just melted of sorts i mean you don't get a lot of specific details in it you do got a nice kind of silver wash kind of going through there but nothing overly detailed uh, i do find it hilarious that right here it actually says you know obviously number four jarvis controlled aided to avengers the safety organization and non-threatening the avengers it's like i don't understand why that needs to be there but it's there but i mean real great detail throughout i mean i love the actual battle damage on the helmet itself coming in here to take a closer look I mean, you can see the scratches and the kind of damage put in there it's actually sculpted into the, the mask itself again real great detail in the neck area just throughout the entire thing looks really very good and as I said, since this is the only thing he actually interacted with, kind of makes sense to actually include that. And then he also does come with this display stand. As you can see, it's got the Avengers logo right there with the Ultron Mark I plaque right here in the very front. And then you have the standard pillar with the adjustable cradle. But as I said, for his accessories, that's about it. Now, coming in to take a closer look at the figure, the detail on this is absolutely staggering i really couldn't even begin to count how many parts make up this figure you can see for the head you got that very gruesome burnt kind of broken look on them i mean every aspect of this you come around to the top and you can see a little circuit board here you got wires coming from the back kind of going all over him i mean they're all fairly loose when I mean, you can see an amazing amount of detail like here with what i'm assuming is like hydraulic fluid or something that's kind of bleeding but makes it look like blood just in general i mean just all the intricate detail throughout the entire piece is just uh, I, you could stare at this all day long and probably discover something new on it each and every time and you got some nice copper parts kind of painted on here again you got a big heavy wire that kind of comes up to the head now you can't actually remove this piece uh, this is actually a little bit tricky to do kind of just wedge that out and that's where the battery compartment go and, and honestly you don't even really need to leave that on there but you got the little switch right on the side here that when you flip that get my fingernail down in there you can actually get his eyes to light up and it also kind of bleeds through the mouth I mean that looks really very cool as well I mean I absolutely love that I like that kind of texture detail that's actually in the eyes coming in to get a little bit closer of a look at it you can see just how nicely they recreated that kind of appearance that his eyes had in the film itself I mean just absolutely amazing and you come down here and take a look at the actual arm now you can see that one arm is busted up pretty badly uh, it's kind of broken here now one thing that i will say is that unfortunately the thumb on mine did break uh, you can see i got the thumb piece right here 
it kind of just is meant to go right here but for some reason it just sheared off when i was kind of moving around so do be careful with it but one thing I, you know i mean i'm kind of disappointed because obviously this is a 250 fifty dollar figure but it, it, it's kind of hard to get upset when the rest of the figure kind of looks like that it just seems like part of the battle damage i i guess uh, i mean again you got some real great paint detail here in the arms with the wires and everything another little circuit board here again wires just kind of going throughout the entire thing pistons all over the place on this guy you come down here to the waist area and i was not sure how the articulation was going to be on this to be totally honest and there is not a lot of limitations in it there are some aspects that you do want to be careful with obviously but you got all these pistons and everything in here and you can still get a bit of a ball joint kind of thing i mean he doesn't really go side to side but he does move forward and back nicely but one thing that you see is that it can make some of the pistons detach that's actually not a bad thing it's meant to do that and then all you have to do is line that back up and kind of shift it down there kind of fills that back in again so it is all designed to actually do that again come down to the legs you can see definitely asymmetrical in their look you got some real great uh, paint detail right here kind of showing like i said that leaking hydraulic fluid there and then you come down to the rest of the leg again you got a little uh, circuit board right here again much more intricate details along the side here with the knees and the kind of gears and everything like that now like i said the, the articulation is actually pretty good on it i have it twisted like this just to give it that kind of movie look that he had but you don't necessarily have to have it like that you can leave it perfectly straight if you are, are so inclined it's just personal preference but you come down to the feet and again you can see great detail in the feet themselves again with those pistons and everything that kind of flex forward and back as you move the the little toe forward around i mean just absolutely stunning the amount of detail that this thing really does have now one thing that he also does have is a light up chest now you can kind of see like the little arc reactor piece right in here for that you come around here to the back the battery compartments right here it's kind of difficult to actually even tell but it, it is there and then you have the switch right there so you just flip that did that do it yeah there we go you can see that the little arc reactor bit lights up it's not all that bright to be totally honest i wish it was a little bit brighter but you can definitely see that in there it's got the triangle sort of shape and then again you got uh, some like busted up kind of glass sort of look in there which looks really absolutely terrific just it's staggering the amount of detail that this thing has really really staggering now turning this off because i don't want to kill the batteries one thing that i'll say is that uh, we have had a couple different incarnations of the mark one given to us through hot toys over the past couple years this is a, a busted up version that i think it came with one of the iron man figures you can see it is actually different and a lot less detail throughout this entire thing very similar kind of look but definitely you can see that it does not have the same you know intricate details that this does and then you're also seeing that the actual face is a lot more battle damaged this is more designed to replicate how ultron looked after thor threw his hammer at him and then shattered him into a whole bunch of pieces but you can see just like on just this chest panel right here it's missing all these extra paint details so while this is a nice piece this obviously takes it to a whole nother level and for another comparison here he is next to his actual original looking self the number three version from the iron legion this is before he got you know like that acid or whatever it was that was thrown on his face and then obviously before he returned back and was all taken apart and then was mutilated into this <laughs> and then for a final comparison here he is next to the final well not really the final version but the ultron prime version and you can just see how much larger and imposing he became throughout the course of the film now for his articulation due to the fact that this is an extremely unique piece this is a case where i would absolutely recommend going over the instructions that way you know exactly what this figure is capable of doing and you can minimize any damage that you may cause to it Starting out first with the head, it is on a ball joint, so you can kind of get it pivoting left and right like so. It can look left and right a little bit and kind of like move up and down some. But again, because of the attached wires and such, you are a little bit limited when you're rotating it around, but you can get a pretty decent range of motion with it. One thing that I'm, I'm kind of feeling is that the lower neck section here does kind of feel like it rotates some, but I, I can't really get it doing much. So 
I don't want to force it, but it obviously, you can see, wiggles some. So I don't know if that's a separate joint that's there. And you got all these pistons here, so you might actually be able to uh, articulate that a little. I mean, just a smidge not a lot so don't really overdo it and that part's not actually covered in the instructions so just be careful as you're doing it uh, the shoulders here actually are on a uh, ball joints uh, as well so you get a nice range of motion with them this little piece here is a softer rubber so you can kind of lift this and kind of flex it over kind of the chest area right here so you can get a nice range of motion out on that little swivel but then like I said the actual shoulder is on a ball joint so you can rotate it around again though you do have some limitations in the fact that these wires are connected but for the most part you can get that going pretty high I would say he also does rotate at the upper part of the bicep but again you want to be careful because of the wires they are not removable so be very careful the elbow here moves at at about 90 degrees same range of motion here on this one but again because it's asymmetrical you, you have a little bit different of some functionality whereas this like you kind of had to lift this up this one you don't really have to do too much here with the shoulder you got that same you know ball joint for the uh, armpit and then you got that swivel right at the actual shoulder itself uh this does this actually rotate oh uh, this actually well this one here doesn't actually rotate at the bicep well that's a little bit unfortunate but it, it i mean and again i I don't want to force anything so if it is I'm not going to do it just to kind of prevent it from breaking again you can bend here at the elbow and then the actual wrist are on they're those little wrist pegs that we, we always get from them so I thought it was a ball joint it is actually not it's just those little wrist pegs that we always kind of get from them so it just flexes forward and back and then it rotates all the fingers here are individually articulated but at the base they're not ball joints so they just hinge forward and back and then you have a little knuckle on on each little individual finger uh, the actual thumb was on a ball joint and then it was also on a bit of a hinge as well but unfortunately like I said mine broke off but it, it really I don't know I, I'm not too terribly bothered by that for some reason uh, coming down here to the waist this you want to be a little bit careful I mean it does rotate about that far you don't get too much of a range of motion but it does actually hinge forward and back fairly nicely in doing so though as you see it will pop this out so you just kind of have to line that back up and then shift it right in there or you don't even have to do it at all because again it kind of looks like it's supposed to be broken so i mean i guess that kind of works i wish it kind of pivoted side to side some but all you really get is about that range of motion so you don't get a ton there but for what this is basically kind of made up with i think the articulation for the waist area is actually pretty good the hips here move forward and back again those are a little bit limited because of all the junk that's kind of there but you can get a little bit further of a range of motion there they are on a bit of ball joints right here so you don't get full range of motion moving out but you do get a little bit of pivot and then both legs here well this one here rotates at the upper part of the thigh does this one yeah that one also rotates uh he's got one single joint here oh is it a double joint no that's just a single joint here at the actual knee then you come down to the ankle and these are on ball joints so you can rotate these a little bit but again you got the wires that are connected so do be careful moves forward and back a little bit and then you got on this foot a little bit of a toe pivot what, what do we got here this one moves forward and back you got a little piston right there and then you also got a little bit of toe pivot there as well so lots of articulation way more honestly than i thought a piece this intricate and kind of fragile looking would actually have it really is very impressive what they were able to actually engineer into this overall the piece just by itself now I know a lot of times I talk about how great a hot toy figure looks but what Hot Toys was able to do with the Mark 1 version of Ultron in taking so many different parts and putting them all together I am truly impressed with this it's just so exposed and we see all of it this is one of the most impressive hot toy figures that i have in my personal collection and without question i would absolutely recommend this to you guys whether you're a marvel fan avenger fan or maybe just a fan of six scale figures this turned out great so all that being said if this is a figure that you'd like to add to your collection it is available at sideshow collectibles so all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Sideshow where you can check out availability on this guy, as well as the rest of the Hot Toys 1-6 scale figures. But beyond that, guys, 
that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomus. Don't forget that if you like this video to please like and share it. It goes a long way towards helping me out. Also, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you'll always get an email notification whenever a video goes live and you'll never miss a future review. And as always, until next time, be excellent to each other.